Hi, I'm Kevin Hill, and today we're going to do a beautiful little building, maybe a nice soft landscape around it. I think you'll really have fun with this one. And of course, if you enjoy it, leave a like and subscribe for future painting videos. So let's get started. We'll start off today with a two inch brush and some blue and white, but mostly, mostly blue. Not a whole lot on the brush. And we'll come over here and begin to drop in our sky. I think today we're going to do kind of a normal blue sky with some rolling clouds. Don't want anything too crazy or it might take away from the building, but I don't want a big blue open sky today either. So we'll, we'll find a little balance in there somewhere. There, for now, just throw a blue background in. We'll figure out our clouds in a second. Now we'll work in just a, a soft cloud up here. I think today I'm gonna go with a big, big rolling cloud shape. I'm just loading my filbert brush up with a little bit of white. I did put a touch of red into it, but I think by now with the blue here that I've been picking up, the red's pretty much gone, so it's fine. Normally, you would not wanna just put pure white into a painting, but when you're, when you're working over a wet background, obviously, it's mixing with the paint you have down, so you almost never get pure white anyway. So those of us that work in oils, we have less to worry about when we paint all in one day. We don't have the pure white up here. But it's sometimes pretty distracting. There. Now with our filbert brush in a very soft green color, let's go ahead and drop in a few trees right back here. And as you can see here, I've, I've got a bit of a sketch like we normally do. So here's a building and a, some sort of a small path. I don't think we're gonna make it a road. This is more like a path walking up to the house. So I may actually, if it looks a little thick there to me, I may end up shrinking it, we'll see. But that's what, that's the point of the sketch, right? You kind of get some ideas in there and then you, you refine them or change them because <laughs> what's the point of wasting time painting a path if you end up reducing it by half? It'd just be a, a lot of, a lot of extra painting. There. And this is a this is a nice little green color back here. I'm just using the corner of the filbert brush to sort of scrub it in. This is sort of a mid-tone green. We can work on some darks in here if we want to. There. Yeah, sort of straighten up that path right now. Good. <laughs> Running out of paint. There. Don't don't you mix up a lot when you when you paint. Mix it up in small batches, and then each little batch will look different. I'll add some variety to your painting, because that's always, that's always good. There. Next, I'll load our filbert brush with a nice soft gray color. It has a little bit of red in it. And I'm gonna use this to paint in our little building. There. Now, I'm not gonna be worried too much about making this perfect at this point. It's just a, just trying to get the canvas covered here. And as you know, we do that for the most part. We kind of cover the canvas, then go back and make it look a little nicer. There. And that may not even be the color we go with. I just think it's kind of a, a different pretty color. I did throw just a bit of brown into it just a second ago, because it felt like a little bit of a brown cast would maybe add something to it. There. All right. This side is gonna be the side that we get the highlights so the light's coming across like this. So of course you don't want that to be quite as dark. Lighten it up a little. There. When I sketched this building, you, you can see I, I changed my mind and I made it a little bigger than it was. But again, that's why you sketch. got a lot of nice little attachments and different things. It's not just like a square building. And I think that's kind of neat to have something that's, that's just a little different for you guys. <laughs> we like doing different things together. Next, I'll load up our two inch with a little bit of yellow, green, brown, touch of black, but not a whole lot of black. And right in through here, we'll just start, a, start making some, some grass areas. You can kind of shape the land however you want at this point, and we may choose to change it later on. That's fine. There. The path is still going to be there. Just had to cover it because I don't want to change to a small brush for this. 
There. Now, there's a couple tricks that I would like to share with you guys about doing stuff like this. If you were to underpaint this with a black, because you think oh, I'll just put black over everything, right? Or just a dark color. It would not look great. You would kind of lose some of the depth. So underpaint with what looks to be almost like a highlight and then go with some extreme light over that and you create some nice distance in the painting. So that's sort of my little tip for you. And then of course down here, black, as dark as you can go. <laughs> we really lost that road. That's all right, I remember where it was. We'll stick it back in later. There, see, nice and dark. And even in your underpainting, you're gonna have some depth. Now with our three quarter brush, I'll work on just a touch of highlight out here to the roof of this house. <laughs> there, this is a lot of fun to kind of tighten up and do the detail areas. All right. I don't want too much light on the roof because the light's kind of low coming across like that. Something, <laughs> something interesting. All right, maybe just a, a little sliver of light on this. There we go. The three quarter brush comes to a pretty nice edge. And as you can see, I went ahead and worked on some of the highlights in the grass and the trees just to simply get me sort of thinking about the light source sort of helps to at least start the highlight in the painting before doing the building, at least this time, because that way you have a, a good idea of where the light's hitting different objects and it just helps me. So you may want to do that when you paint. There. You can add more details to the roof. Now, this house looks pretty nice, like it's kind of new or at least not like super old. So, but you make it whatever style you want. If you want to make it really run down, we've done some buildings with the cracks in the roof and all that. So it's kind of whatever you feel like doing. I'm just trying to show you different things because, you know, I like showing you new things, fun, fun and different things. Okay, let's, let's put a little more color. I have very little color out here in the face of the barn or building. I guess it's like a little house. It's not really a barn. See, very little paint down on the canvas. So I can just almost get a, get a rough and textured effect just by pulling down with a little more paint. And that sort of helps to, to add a little interest to the, to the house. Straighten up your windows a little. I just threw, threw some quick windows in, very simple. Now you clean them up and make them look nice and straight. There. Good, not too much paint or it all just becomes muddy. Leave this side in shadow. A little extra purple in there kind of is nice sometimes. Now with our little detail brush, I'm gonna drop in just a few little shadow areas right across the face of this building. And make your shadow color just a little darker than you would actually like it because it's gonna mix with the, all the light we have down already. <laughs> now we got some some exciting news about the brush. It's now currently under production, so pretty soon you guys are going to be able to paint with it too, and I think you'll really enjoy it. I found it's just extremely useful for so many things, especially when you want to make a more detailed or refined painting. This brush is pretty nice, so in the very near future it will be up on the website. You all can go check it out, and I'll, I'll let you know when it's available. There. I think that's neat. Maybe that's like the trees casting a shadow right along the house. Next, I'll just clean this area up with the fan brush, a little bit of yellow and green. <laughs> there. Now you're gonna wanna vary your greens to make some areas darker and some areas lighter, assuming you, <laughs> you did the sparing coat of paint under, underneath all this grass. Now, if you have a lot of paint down here, like especially in this road area, you may not have to vary the colors as much. But if you're, if you're pretty careful with the background, then, then you have the option to, to change your colors, make things lighter and darker when you want them, <laughs> not so much just when the paint runs out, which is kind of nice. I like that better, personally. There, now I'm just gonna cut right in. And remember this light, so here's a shadow. You gotta always think about that, but don't just leave it unfinished. 
Throw a little darker green in there. Get some texture. Good. A little brown into it. Change the color all the time. The more you rub it, the more flat it will go, which is okay in certain areas, but not in every, every area of the painting. We don't want it to be flat. There, let's sneak just a little light back here. I'm gonna pull it. There. With our three quarter brush now, we can just drop in a bit of highlight to this road or path. I guess it really is a path, not so much a road, but that's okay. There. Now, of course, as you come over to the left, you just let that brush leave the canvas like this. Pretty simple. What this does is creates a very, very interesting transition between light and dark. The reason this side is dark is because this is a kind of a mound, kind of a little rolling hill or something. And then that casts a shadow on the path, as well as this little kind of dip there. This path is lower than the rest of the ground around it. There. So I hope that makes a whole lot of sense to you. <laughs> if it doesn't, just look at some paths or check this one out when it's done. And it really, and you'll see the shapes there. A little bit of just sort of looking at, at nature and looking at different things really helps. It's one of the best things you can do. There. And then allow the textures just to get a little bit bigger as you come forward, a little bigger gaps of dark. Nice. I've got a lot of dark over here, so it'll actually mix a lot when I go over there, which is kind of nice. There. So even in the darks, you don't want it pure black, so just rough it up a little bit. Now I'm going to add a few highlights to some beautiful rocks out here. And this really helps to just enhance the painting. <laughs> and just brings it to the next level a little bit. Nice. Now watch it because things are getting kind of muddy here. So you gotta be careful. There. What I mean is I've got about one brush stroke to do this. Just, just one or two. Two would be the absolute maximum. Good. And this really helps to develop the interest in the foreground and sort of help to kind of bring you up to the building. All sorts of benefits you get from doing extra details like this. Nice. Gentle. Press too hard and it's just going to be totally muddy. <laughs> there. Maybe a little bit on that one. You can just, in the background, sort of touch and get a little highlight. And you don't even need so much of an underpainting under them because the, the grass is enough. There. Now with our detail brush, I'm going to drop on just a few loose leaves up here. Not a whole lot, and that's the reason I'm using this brush. I don't want to go overboard. There. And of course we'll throw up just the tiniest touch of highlight out here. Not a whole lot. But if I were to make this tree solid, I would lose the background. But I was looking at it, you know, thinking maybe I'll just leave it a dead tree, but it just didn't quite fit. So we're going to make it kind of a sparse tree. I think that'll, that'll fit and it'll kind of give a little variety. We don't want all the trees perfectly lush. Maybe a, maybe this one doesn't get the right amount of water or something. So its leaves are not quite as perfect, but it's still hanging on. There's always a reason for, for things in your painting. There. Now I'm going to add just a bit of highlight to a, a fence that I quickly dropped in over here. I just felt like we needed a little extra something to sort of bring your eye into the painting. And a fence usually works out pretty well for something like that, especially in a, in a painting with a building or something. There. And this isn't very big, and I, I did make it stop pretty quick. You can always change that, but I don't really want to overdo the fence. The fence isn't the point today. But if you want to make your fence continue back, that's fine. There. <laughs> Didn't take a whole lot of time, does it? Pretty quick and easy and fun to do these things. Don't stress out over the details. Have fun with them. 
Now with our detail brush, I'm gonna, I'm gonna do something that's kind of interesting here. I decided, and I kind of thought about this for most of the painting, I decided that I want a, uh, like a rose bush growing up this house. Two reasons for it. Number one, it's just kind of fun. And always that's a good reason to do something in a painting. It's just fun. Another good reason is it helps to push this building back just a tiniest bit into the painting. Okay, I'm not even going to worry about the base at this point. I can feather that in, in a second. And let's throw a little highlight out on it. A little yellow, a little green, white. There we go. Very quickly. All right. All right, now, wipe out my brush. A little bit of red and yellow. Ready for this? There we go. Just touch on these little roses. I think that's neat. Maybe people won't know it's a rose bush right off the bat, or maybe they'll never notice it, but it's just kind of fun to have it in there. All right, well, I think we're done. I had a lot of fun, I hope you did too. Don't forget to check out my website, my DVDs, and also my brush line. And thanks for watching. Mm -hmm.